Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is just a little experiment that I do every now and again. It's, it's cross-checking what I already know should be true, but just in case. Um, the whirring noise in the background is because I'm filming with the lights on, which means I must remember not to look up because I'll look straight into the blinding light. <laughs> um, the, dull, the days are going to be dull for a while. We've got wet and windy weather, so it's very heavily overcast. And it, it suddenly dawned on me, extending my day lengths um, is what the lights were intended for. But on a really dull day in the winter time, why not just turn them on? And then, they, you know, the lights will hopefully improve the light level during the day and then extend the day length. So kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> That's the theory anyway. Um, what I'm doing in this little thing is to um, check whether there is any residual salts in my clay pots. So not the media, the clay pots. So first job is to benchmark the uh, water. <laughs> Sorry, I was concentrating. <laughs> Uh, concentrating and doing stuff often leads to a silence. Okay, so as expected, my water has got a TDS reading of... Hang on, where's my camera? I don't know whether you'll read that because the lights are going to reflect it. But it hovers between sort of 8 and 10. It's 8 today. Sometimes it's 9, sometimes it's 10. But, you know, around 10. That's close enough. <laughs> close enough for jazz. We'll leave that water there for now, turn that off and don't waste me batteries. The first job then is to flush the media. Yeah? So, am I still on camera? Yes. Well, the plant is, I hope I'm not. Frightens the kids. So I'm just going to pour some clean water through the pot. Now that's all I would normally do as a flush. And obviously that media has now had a, has now had a wash. Right, so that's stage one. Because that's how I would normally flush the plant, I'm not going to do anything different. Oh. <laughs> so I could, thought I could see a huge mealy bug on that spike, but it's actually the um, honeydew stuff. Right, so now the object is to put the pot in a relatively small container, hence saucepan, yeah, and then just top up the water, relatively small volume per size of the pot, up to as near as the top as I can get without flooding the place. And there we go, so that's virtually up to the top of the clay pot. If I go any more it will flow over the outside. Now all I'm going to do is just leave that to soak for a while. The idea being now the pot's full of water inside and out. If there's any residual salts in the clay, in a bit of time it should start to leach out into that water. So we'll leave that to soak for a bit, and as I usually say in the kitchen, I'll be back. Okay, let's have a good soak now. So what we'll do is we'll pick that up and let it drain. Another look at the uh, TDS reading. Now I would expect it to have gone up a bit, but it's the amount it's gone up I'm after, not whether it has or not. Um, right, what, what have we got then? Right, I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. That that's gone up to 14, 13. So so it's gone from eight. To some well, to somewhere around 13, 14. It can't make his mind up because it hasn't got a decimal place. Don't need a decimal place for TDS readings, for goodness sake. So yes, there is a little bit of residual salts have come from somewhere into that water. The idea of flushing the plant initially was that's where the plant gets watered and fed. So in theory if there was any soak up of nutrients being stored in the media 
in theory it should have mainly been flushed out. You, you, nev you can never do a total flush quite honestly if you've got organic media. It's going to hold a little bit but it's if that starts building up by repeated feedings without any flushing in time it can actually build up to a level that would be not be considered safe for the orchid roots. Um, too high a concentration of fertilizers right next to the roots and I mean that's a caplia They'll, those roots down in the pot will be all attached to that bark and everything touching the inside of the pot and stuck to it and in the case of that one coming out the outside um, so the idea is to just check that um, first your media isn't holding anything but by giving that a flush first it should mean the media has got very little if any to worry about left in it and then by giving the pot a good soak, although it's not a scientific thing to be exact, it shows whether any salts have come out of the pot plus any more that may have come out of the media. But with a relatively small volume of water like that, um, the amount of increase in that TDS reading for me is not a worry. So now I can get back in my head that, you know, my feeding and flushing routine in the clay pots is sufficient not to get an excess of salts lying around the roots in any shape or form. Um, I mean the, the, the problem with clay pots is that your roots will climb all over the clay pot and stick to the clay. Um, these particular pots that came from Rachel with the holes in, um, they are very hard clay. The clay was well tested when I first got the pots. This clay is rock hard and it holds very well if you look while I've been talking that plant's been sat it's not exactly warm in here and already it's drying it doesn't hold water this clay it really is very very hard clay but there are some plants I've got that are not in that type of pot kick the tripod though don't you for instance this this was one of the holy clay pots that came from a different place um, came in a box as a gift from a from a viewer. Now this clay is a lot softer so in theory it could hold quite a bit more. So I think what I'll do now is because that water hasn't changed its TDS much I'm going to give that one a flush and then we'll do the same test on that one because this is a much softer clay and it holds a lot more water but there's also quite a few roots stuck to this and they're not showing signs of distress so even though this is softer clay, I still think it's going to be okay. But while we've got all the stuff out, let's give it a try. So uh, right, first job, give it a flush. I'm going to have to get the RO unit on soon. Chucking water around like this. So that's not going to be enough. But the amount of um, stuff that's gone in that water still constitutes a flush. When I flush, I don't use clean water for every single pot. I haven't got enough. I just haven't got enough RO water to warrant doing that. I've been using hundreds of gallons of the stuff. So we'll give that media a flush. Uh, you notice I haven't watered the pot. When I'm flushing under normal circumstances, I also flush the pot. But I'm deliberately not doing it this time. You can see the outside of the pot I've managed to keep quite dry. And then what we'll do get my TDS meter out of the way in case we get a flood because this is a slightly larger pot we'll put that in there over here in case it goes over yeah it's going to go over the top I thought it would and I didn't want that all over my table right and then we'll uh, sit that one down there and we'll come back and revisit that in an appropriate amount of time which in my case I got distracted was nearly half an hour I'll be back Okay, let's have a look and see how this one's been doing. Let's like say this is a much softer clay, so in theory would absorb more water as the plant's being watered and is potentially capable of holding more salts as a consequence. Yeah. That is a straggly looking cat here, that one. <laughs> Still, it bloomed, that's the main thing. Right, what are we up to this time? I haven't got a clue what I'm doing on the camera because I can't see the screen. 
Right. Now this started at 13 this time, somewhere between 13 and 14. I'd expect this one to go up a little more. We went from, a, let's say, 8 to 13, which is a difference of 5. Well, this started at 13, and it's gone up to 22. <coughs> so that's a bigger difference. That's a difference of um, sort of 9 or 10. So a little bit more being held in the uh, pot than in the hard clay pots but not enough to worry about. You have to bear in mind that if I was flushing, you know, the, the pot and the media would get a good wash with clean water. So I don't think I've got a problem. And that water is not um, contaminated enough to waste, so let's go back in there. We'll use that for something else. So I'm happy that my flushing is working successfully and not enough to worry about. Um, you're always gonna get I mean, to do this more scientifically, in theory, um, <clears throat> the media should have been flushed several times. It should have been flushed, and then left for a while, and then flushed again. And that would hopefully <clears throat> leach out anything that was in the media first. But there's only so much you can do. There's only so, so much time you've got, and only so much water, or in my case, only so much water. So... Um, all this stems from thinking. A few years ago, um, not when I was using the MSU fertiliser, but um, a few years ago, um, I just forgot about flushing. And I got about probably two thirds of the way through the growing season and um, probably saw somebody else's video or something like that and thought, oh, I wonder what my pots are like. And um, <clears throat> I actually chose a pot that had not ancient media in it, but not brand new, so a pot that had probably been in that media about a year. And without soaking it or anything like that, I used clean water and poured it through the pot a couple of times and tested it. And the water went from 10 to 45 on one pot. So obviously in that pot there was quite a build-up. Um, <laughs> It happened to be in a pot that shouldn't have had any excess salts because of the type of plant. So it worried me to death. So everything at that point got an absolutely massive flush. Um, and then, after a couple of days, they got another one. So I really gave everything a really good flush. It used up an awful lot of water, but it gave me peace of mind, so it was worth doing. And then from that point on until now... I've never forgot about flushing. Yeah, it, 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 some plants would be more affected by any build-up. Things like Miltoniopsis, Masdevallias, the things with the more sensitive roots that, generally speaking, don't need a lot of feed anyway. Well, the last thing you want is it building up in the media because the roots are sensitive. They're more likely to be subject to damage um, than other plants. Um, so, you know... I would imagine things like Vandas or uh, possibly Phalaenopsis that are capable of taking quite high levels of feed relative to other orchids, it wouldn't hurt them quite so much because they'd use it. But nonetheless, it's still a good idea every now and again to give everything a really good flush through with clean water. And you're sort of benchmarking, you're starting afresh. And then if there is any slow build-up of salts, every now and again you're taking it back to that point where there's little or none left. You, you never get every single bit out, I doubt, unless you grow in something like stones or an inert media that holds nothing. And that doesn't include lecker, because lecker does hold some water. But things like river rock, the stones, the pebbles, the gravels and things like that, <coughs> when you flush, you flush. It's done easy and also if you're growing outside and your plants get rained on you're getting a free flush basically you know unless you're standing out there in the rain feeding them at the same time then when they get rained on that clean rain water washes them through washes the plants off keeps the dust off of them right down through the media the pots the lot everything gets a nice wash clean well that's fine if you grow outside and you can do that 
I can't and I don't, so I do have to flush. So just a little experiment to uh, spark off some thoughts and um, yeah, I'm now happy that I can, <laughs> it's funny, this is preempting. talk about planning ahead. I haven't got anything else to water in here today except the holy clay pots and they're due for a flush. <laughs> so that's two done, just the other 14 to go now, um, which will take me about half an hour. So lazy day for me today. Okay, so thanks for dropping by. See you next time. And I'll be interested to see, interested to see what this looks like filming during the day with the lights on. And hopefully there isn't too much glare or anything like that it should be okay and it's preempting the possibility of um, <clears throat> doing a live broadcast out here in the grow room after it gets dark so the only lighting will be these grow lights so I need to check that the webcam can still film under those conditions so that that's a job to do later today when it gets dark <laughs> although standing in here now it looks nearly dark anyway and it's only 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> real dull miserable day and it's, it looks like we're in for this for quite a while now but at least it should warm up which means my night temperatures won't drop down as much and um, doesn't use all my lecky up with the heater going on and off all night long like it was last night God, it was cold this morning anyway see you next time thanks for dropping by